All right, hello, welcome back. Uh, it's our first video post fall break. And uh, this is for contemporary issues class, not US history. I've had a lot of mix up with kids doing both work. Good job on that, but if you're not in both classes, you don't have to do it. But anyways, contemporary issues, we are ready to do the Bill of Rights. Yay, very important, very, very important. Um, I am waving the flag because to me, this is super important as a part of our government. I'm also feeling very patriotic. I don't know if you can see it with the light on, uh, but I wore one of my coolest shirts that I own today. Yeah, so cool. Um, so this, the reason why I'm feeling so patriotic is because the Bill of Rights, those are the first 10 amendments to the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States are, is the set of laws that our government runs on, okay? So um, these are your basic personal freedoms. And I guarantee you already know a lot of these. Um, and depending on your eighth grade teacher, you should have learned these in eighth grade. And in fact, I used to teach eighth grade and I'm using an old eighth grade document that I used to teach off of um, to teach you this. But our standard, I think it's CI number 12, contemporary issues number 12, I may be wrong, but um, CI 12, and it's about the Bill of Rights and why it's so important. Um, and I want to just show you what the Bill of Rights are. We're gonna define them, we're gonna break them down. Um, and I'm gonna give you a very easy assignment this week about the Bill of Rights. Um, but remember, they're the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. Yay! And they are very, very important to you because there's a whole lot of things that are freedom. There are a lot of rights in this. Almost dropped it, my goodness. Um, there are a lot of rights and those are super duper important because they, these can never be changed and so they protect your freedom forever. As long as you're living in America, you have these rights uh, and these freedoms, okay, as an American citizen. Um, I'm gonna put this down so I don't drop it because I know that's a big no-no. Um, yay, one more time, yay, Bill of Rights, woo, woo! Man, oh man. All right, that's safely put away. Guys, I hope you've had a great fall break. Um, we're gonna go through this, remember to pause as needed. And uh, yeah, it'll help you with the assignment that we're gonna do this week. Um, I'm feeling a little rusty. It's been, a, I've had some time off. I've had a good fall break. So let's rock and roll and see how we can do on this, okay? All right, we'll get back into it. I think I probably need to use black today because since I'm white. Okay, so Bill of Rights, first 10 amendments to the Constitution, the most important freedoms that you have as an American. Okay, so amendment number one, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people to peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Woo! Why do they have to talk so fancy? Man, 1700s were a great time to speak English. All right, so let's break it down. So what it says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That means a church, okay? So freedom of religion, and we'll go ahead and write this down. So freedom of religion, whoa, that's, gotta change that up a little bit. So freedom of religion, let's see how I do this. There we go. Yes, perfect. Freedom of religion, okay? What else does it say? Uh, abridging the freedom of speech or the press, okay? So that means you can say what you want and write what you want as long as you are not making um, like threats. Like you can't say, like I'm gonna blow up this theater or something like that, you can't say any of that stuff, okay? And if you took US history, there is a court case about that, the, the clear and present danger. Um, so if you're making threats, that's not freedom of speech, you're not protected there, okay? Uh, freedom of religion, speech, slash the press, that means you can write what you want as long as it's true. Um, and the right to protest. Okay, and we'll say the right to protest. We'll just say the protest, okay? So um, as long as you are peaceful, you are allowed to get together and petition the government and say, hey, we need to change. That just means a protest. Um, so it's all good, it's all good. All right, so speech can be spoken or written. Spoken or written, okay? Press, we know what that is, it's like the news. We'll just say media. Okay, now we need to put a clause on this. A clause is like a catch, okay? No threats. Can't make threats, because then that changes, okay? Assembly means a group. And petition means you're trying to make a change. So like a protest, protest for change. So you have rights to do this. And this is very, very good. You need these rights, okay? Because, 
That's how you make changes happen. You need to be able to have good ideas and you need to be able to express these ideas through spoken or written word and media. You need to be able to get together with people and uh, make sure and work together to make a change. And all of that goes under the, the category of petition. Let me see how this looks on the screen. I think it looks good. It's not crooked today. That's good. Why are these freedoms important to protect? Well, that's how you have changes. Uh, these, this is how you get change done. How change is accomplished. Change is accomplished. There we go. And then this box over here, we are not gonna worry about it. It says illustration. Uh, so I used to teach eighth grade, so I made them draw and stuff like that. Um, I might make my in-person kids draw. I haven't decided. We'll see how they feel about it. I know some people are really hate drawing, so. But anyway, that's the first amendment. So the first amendment, uh, you can just remember it as freedom of speech or freedom of religion, okay? Um, a lot of people say this one's the most important. I think it is very, very important. I don't think it's the most important. I think the fourth and the fifth are very important because it has to do more with your legal rights as far as getting arrested and things like that. Um, but I think these are important that because they do, this is a very big form of freedom, uh, especially freedom of religion. A lot of countries in the world don't have that. Um, so yeah, all right, very good, very good. I'm gonna have to erase to scroll up, remember to pause if you need to, and uh, we'll move a little quicker through the next few, okay? All right, cool. Amendment two, which is a big one, uh, very hotly controversial, discussed, hotly discussed uh, topic here. Uh, this is the one, right, to bear arms. So it says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear, and bear arms shall not be infringed. So a militia, all that is, it's a volunteer army. Uh, I do believe Tennessee has a state militia, uh, and it's just, it's people who say, you know, if anything bad ever happens, we will accept the call to arms and fight for our freedom or fight for whatever cause. Um, and we are allowed to have that. That's a right given to us by the government, which is very, very good. And this is one that is super unique to America. A lot of countries don't really allow people to have guns. Um, but the founding fathers had just fought in a revolutionary war against a government that was like being very oppressive. And they were like, look, the only way you're really going to have freedom is if you have the ability to fight back. And the way to fight back against government is to have guns. Um, me, personally, I own guns. I don't know how you feel about guns. Um, it doesn't matter to me how you feel about guns, honestly. Um, I, I just have them because I like to do target shooting and things like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't really feel threatened by the government or anything. Um, and I hope I never have to use them in such a fashion. But uh, if, you feel, if you don't like guns, that's cool. You're in, you enjoy that right. Thankfully, we have all these rights, okay? Uh, you have the right to think how you want to think, and so do I, and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing, okay? So the right to bear arms, and arms are guns, okay? All right? And bear means keep or own, keep or own, keep or own. And of course, arms, guns. And then for what purpose slash purposes shall we be allowed to, uh, to bear arms? Um, it's the, to maintain the security of a free state. The, I, that seems like an opinion question. I'm not asking for that purpose because we can talk all day about well, why should we have guns, why should we not have guns? And I see both sides. There's, we definitely have a major gun problem in America. Um, but this question is referencing the amendment. What does the amendment say? They call it the security of a free state. The security of a free state. And like I said, I hope I'm not being offensive. I hope nobody thinks I'm weird because I own guns or anything, but um, it's not. I, the only reason I own them is because I like to target shoot. Uh, it's fun. Uh, trap shooting. So, yeah. Cool. Very good. Let me make sure you can see that really well. See how we're doing on time. We're doing great. Security of a free state. Perfect. We can see that. All right. Amendment three. No soldier, no soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So what this means is that during peacetime, such as now in America, if we're not having a war, um, soldiers can't come to your house and knock on the door and say, hey, I'm gonna stay here, there's nothing you can do about it, it's my right, blah, blah, blah. You have the right, because of Amendment 3, to say, no way, even though you work for the government, whatever, this is my house, you can't come in, okay? Now, but look, nor in time of war, so even if we're having a war, if they haven't made a law 
prescribed by law. If they haven't made a law that says people let soldiers stay in your house, uh, then you can still say no, okay? So the housing of soldiers. Now, I really, really, really hope we never have a war here because that could be very, very bad. Um, but if we do, the only way you'll have to keep soldiers in your house is if they make a law that says you have to keep soldiers in your house, okay? So a quarter means let someone stay. Why should we not have to quarter soldiers? Um, I mean, it's pretty simple. That's the government's job to take care of that. It's not our job. Now, this amendment comes specifically from the Revolutionary War. If you recall from learning about the Revolutionary War, um, the British uh, stayed in the houses of the colonists. Um, and the colonists were really like, yo, like, why, why should we allow these strangers into our houses? Um, and in fact, they even had to like cook for them. They had to do their laundry. Um, they had to basically just take care of them. And they're like, this isn't our job. These are our resources. This is our food. This is our house. What are you doing? And the British government's like, we don't care. You got to do this. So um, that's where this comes from. So this is a very specific in history amendment. But like I said, hopefully that never happens again. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna have to erase. Remember to pause, take a break if you need to. Remember, email me with any questions, um, and let's rock and roll. All right, here we go. To me, these are two of the most important, okay? Because these really protect you from overpowerful police, overpowerful government trying to infringe on your rights, that sort of thing. And I know people say, well, the Second Amendment protects me, but you don't wanna to have to get to that point of using a gun to keep yourself safe from government or otherwise. What these are about, these are basic rights that say, look, you have the right to own property, you have the right to a court case, you have the right to all of the, this fair type of treatment from a government to you, okay? So that's why the fourth and the fifth, to me, these are the most important. Um, and I think if you ask a lawyer or a law enforcement officer, anybody like that who are familiar, really familiar with these laws, they would say these are probably the most important, okay? Obviously, free speech is definitely up there, but to me, these are them, okay? But that's just me. All right, the minimum four. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Okay, so let's break this down. Essentially what this is, is it's like if somebody makes an accusation about you, the, there's a process that has to be going, that has to be passed through in order to get something done, like an arrest or a warrant or something like that. So let's, let's break it down. The right of people to be secure in their persons, houses, and papers. That means the government cannot come kidnap you. They can't break into your house for no reason. Uh, they can't look at your tax documents, things like that, without reason. Now, I know you're probably sitting there, and I know that if there were kids in here, they would be immediately, well, what about all the stuff that's happened in the news recently with people getting busted in on and stuff? I don't know specifically about those cases, okay? I'm just reading these about to you. I'm just reading about these to you. If you want to email me or Google it or whatever about these specific cases about, well, why did the police break into this person's house and do this? Well, they probably had a warrant or not. I don't know, but I'm not talking about that right now. What I'm talking about is the amendments, okay? Just got to, I know we live in a very hotly controversial time period, so let's just stick to these, okay? Okay, cool. So, you, you're not going to get kidnapped by the government or police. Your house is going to be protected by the government and police. Your papers are protected by the government and police. Look, no unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Now, there are ways that the police uh, still can search and look through your stuff. You remember, if they have probable cause, and that's actually in there, they have to have probable cause. So, like, I know a lot of you are worried about your car, like when you get pulled over and things like that, you might be worried about the police searching your car. Um, they have to have a reason, like they have to see something, they might have to smell something, uh, just something like that, that gives them what we call probable cause, okay? Okay, now if somebody else does it, it has to be supported by oath or affirmation, meaning somebody, if they're, if they're telling on you, they have to follow a process to tell the police, and then the police say, hey, we got this tip, 
from so and so, and now we're coming to search your place, and we might have to seize some of your stuff. Okay. Now I know that was a lot, but basically what it means is there needs to be one of these in order for you to get arrested, a warrant. Okay. Uh, so it's it keeps you safe from the police coming to your house and knocking on your door and saying, "Hey, we need in here." You just need to say this. Well, why? Why? You need to have probable cause. You need to have a warrant. Okay. All right. So protection from unreasonable search and seizure. Okay. And the reason why the founding fathers did this is because the British soldiers were coming to people's houses and saying, hey, we need this, 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 and this, and this. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. And there are governments around the world who send in police when they don't trust their citizens, they send in police and they say, hey, by order of the government, we're taking your house or we're coming into your house and we're looking for stuff. And there's really nothing you can do. So here in America, it is a beautiful gift that we have amendment number four. Okay. So seize or seizure, that, mean, that means the government, and I'm going to put G-O-V apostrophe C, means government, government taking your stuff, your property, got to be fancy. Okay. Under what conditions can the government search and seize your property? Probable cause, a warrant. Okay. Probable cause or a warrant. Cool. All right. And a warrant can come and probable cause can come through this oath and affirmation. All right. I know that one was a lot. I hope it makes sense. I think it will. Um, you can Google it or email me if you need more explanation. All right, amendment number five. Here we go. We're almost halfway there. Let's see how much how we're doing on time. Oh yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. Maybe we can get done in under thirty minutes. I bet we can. All right, amendment number five. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or indict or, or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury. Except in cases arising in the land or naval forces. That means the military or the militia. When in actual service of time of war or public danger, nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, that's double jeopardy, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Super important right there, due process of law nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. That means money, okay? Woo! All right, so I'm just gonna break this one down over there because it's a lot and I know how I am. I'll start talking and I won't shut up for about 20 minutes. So let's just break it down simply. No person can be charged with the same crime twice, okay? So if uh, you do a crime, you can't get doubly charged for it. Now, they might can get you on a separate charge that's related, um, but it can't be you killed one person, you're going to get charged for murder two times. Okay. Now, if you killed a person and you didn't have a right to own the gun that you used, then you get charged with that uh, gun charge too. So they can't get you for multiple crimes on the same kind of thing, but uh, the same crime, the same charge, twice, no. Okay. No person has to be a witness against himself or herself, okay? No person has to be a witness against him or herself. A person's life, liberty, and property cannot be taken away without due process. Now, let me explain what due process is. Due process, all it is, it's a trial, more or less, okay? It is the process of the law where you're presumed, in, where you're considered innocent until proven guilty. Um, it is the right to a jury. It's a right to an attorney if you can't afford one. It's basically your your Miranda rights, okay? Uh, which I don't know those verbatim. I'm not a police officer, okay? And then private property cannot be taken for public use without getting paid for it. They can't just take it from you. Now, they can eventually be like, hey, uh, the public needs this land. We're going to offer you this much money, um, and you basically, you need to take it, okay? And um, this does happen. It happened to my parents. Uh, the county needed to run some electric wires on their property, um, but they paid them pretty good money. So my parents were like, okay, no problem. So, okay. So amendment four and five are super duper important because it does have to do with if you do get caught breaking the law, 
then these are your protections as a so-called criminal. Okay? Hope that makes sense. All right, let's rock and roll. Remember to pause if you need to. There's the answers, and here we go. All right. And amendment number six and number seven. Once again, kind of sticking to the uh, the criminal aspect of being of your rights. So here we go. Amendment six. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury. That means they don't they're not biased. Uh, of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, uh, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. So this really is more like the Miranda rights here, okay? So the accused have a right to be informed, so you got to know what crime that you're being accused of. They can't just say you're thrown in jail and you say why, and they say we can't tell you. No, they have to tell you why you're in jail. They're accused of a right to confront the witnesses against him. Basically, this is when a jury has to listen to both sides. That's what that means. It doesn't mean you can get the witness's face and be like, hey, what are you saying? You know, like a confrontation. No, not like that. It means that it has to be a trial where both sides are heard, okay? And a right to counsel for his or her defense. Defense. So somebody, a counsel, that means a lawyer, okay? A lawyer. So um, somebody to defend you who knows the law really, really well, okay? And then why is it important to have a speedy and public trial? Uh, to get your facts right, okay? Because if as time passes, as time passes, you know, memory gets weird, things like that happen, okay? Uh, right to a speedy and public trial by jury. And I think I might have skipped some of those up there, but that's okay. We, go, we went through them. And I talked enough about them that you know, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sorry I talked so much. All right, cool, cool. Remember, take breaks if you need to. This one's also really, really important because like I said, if you do get accused of a crime slash get arrested, this is gonna protect you, okay? okay. All right, then it's seven. In suits at common law, Hang on, sorry. In suits of common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of tr trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. So basically what this means is it has to be a certain type of case, basically more than $20 worth of property or whatever, in order to have a trial. Um, and then no jury shall be examined. So this means that uh, you can't, like if you get presumed innocent in a case, if you're not convicted of the charge, then you can't get recharged for that. It kind of goes back to that double jeopardy type thing. Um, I'm not great on like legal jargon such as this. So um, if you can explain that one better, please email me and let me know. Um, but that's basically what I believe that one means. Jury trial in common law cases. Common law. Okay, so a jury, what is a jury? That is people who decide your case. Okay, and what kinds of court cases qualify for a jury? Well, common law plus $20, so yeah. Common law or civil, so like if you gotta sue somebody. Involving more than 20 bucks. Okay, very good. Let me see how we're looking. Looks good. The sun's coming out over here, so I didn't want it to be a glare. All right, moving on. Amendment eight excessive bail, that means too much, shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Now, there's a lot of debate about this, if uh, the death penalty is a cruel and unusual punishment. I'm not getting into it. Um, I know everybody's got opinions about the death penalty, so we're not even going to discuss it. But here is the basic, let's just break it down. No cruel and unusual punishment. Okay. What is bail? That's the money you pay to get out of jail. Before you've been proven guilty, if you are guilty. 
money you pay to get out of jail. Cruel, that just means like, uh, like mean, extremely mean. What kinds of punishments will be cruel and unusual today? This is going to be anything like physical beatings. Uh, so like anything physical. They really can't touch you as far as like if you're not being, if you are not protesting, if you're not fighting, they really can't do much to you. They can put you in handcuffs and that's about it. Now if you're fighting back, obviously they can use force. But um, physical force, pretty much you're protected from nowadays, which is really good. Now, I know uh, there have been cases, especially over the summer, uh, where this wasn't followed. I'm not talking about those cases right now. We're just talking about the amendment, okay? And I know that these things happen, and I know, I don't know. It's just such a controversial time to be alive. I'm just trying to not offend anybody, and I'm trying to be on everybody's good side. Um, so please know that I'm not trying to be offensive in any way, okay? I'm here for you. Yeah. All right. All right. Rock and roll. And then it's 9 and 10, and we're almost done. Yay! So here we go. Amendment 9. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. So that's really weird. But what that means is that you can't look at other amendments and say, well, that actually means blah, blah, blah. So basically what Amendment 9 says is it says, hey, if it doesn't say it here, give the power to the people. Okay, powers to the people. This is super, this is a really good amendment, okay, because this keeps the government from making way too many laws. Now I know you're probably sitting at home being a teenager and you're like, man, the government, man, there's just way too many laws. There's just so many rules in life. There's just way too many laws. And yes, I agree with you to a certain extent. Um, but the Founding Fathers, they were trying to avoid this 250 years ago. And so what they said is they said, hey, if it's not listed here in the Constitution, you can do it, I guess. Okay. Now, obviously, these things have changed, and we've added way more amendments. Um, but uh, in the beginning, power was given to the people, so that's very good. So retain means keep, means you cannot lose it. Keep slash cannot lose. Okay. And what does this amendment say about powers not written in the Constitution? They belong to the people. So you have rights you didn't even know about. They belong to the people. Cool. Very good. So if it's not listed specifically, you can do it. And also you can't change the words around in these amendments to take away rights from other people. All right. Last one. And it's basically the same thing, but just a little bit different. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. So basically the same thing as Amendment 9. If it's not written in the Constitution, the states can decide and the people can decide. So that's really, really good. Undelegated powers kept by the states and the people. Very good. Delegate means give or assign. And then how does this amendment illustrate the idea of federalism? And we already learned about federalism several weeks ago. Federalism is when power is divided between the national government and the state's government, okay? So it is a division of power. Division of power, and that's all you need to write. All right. So hopefully, if you watch this video, you can see just why the Bill of Rights is so important. Now, let's break it down real simple. Bill of Rights. It's the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, okay? The Constitution is the law of the land. And as you saw in the Bill of Rights, I'm not going to go back through all of them, they include things that are essential freedoms. I say essential because, like, these are super duper duper important, okay? These are freedoms that really we absolutely need, okay? Now, I know we can debate the Second Amendment. I know there's a lot of discussion about is free speech really free, all this and that. Yes, we could talk a lot all day about a lot of these things, okay? But at the very, very basic level, the first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights, protect your essential freedoms, your key freedoms for what it means to be an American. The Bill of Rights can never be changed, okay? So these will, you will always have these as an American citizen. And um, honestly, these do make me really proud to be an American. I know America and our government, we do have our problems, but every country in the world has their problems. 
but the Bill of Rights really sets us aside because these can never be changed. Notice, it gives us power, it gives us safety, it gives us protection, it gives us so much freedom. It's really a really wonderful thing, okay? So the Bill of Rights, fantastic. Guys, please email me if you have any questions about any of this. Uh, I know some of these topics were controversial. Didn't want to offend anybody, that was not my thing. So if you got a problem, please let me know. Please email me and we can talk it out. And I promise I'm not trying to be offensive in any way. I'm here for you. I want you to learn, okay? Um, guys, have a great day. Good luck on everything. Coming back to school this uh, fall, after fall break, either online or in person. Email me if you need anything. Have a good one. Peace. Bye.